Good morning. It's a big pleasure to be here as usual. Thanks, Thane, for your nice words. Uh, before I start my talk, which is a joint work with Alda Carvalho and Carlos Pereira dos Santos that usually come to this uh, gathering, but they could not make it this year, uh, I would like to announce some news from the Portuguese conspiracy. These are the, the, the ones that, uh, that came this year, but uh, some others didn't. They will come next time. Okay. Uh, as Thanes uh, told you, we organized the, the, the Gathering for Gardner Europe in January 15, and we just published the proceedings, and I have a few uh, for sale, so you can see me after my talk. I have them there at the table. They will be available on Amazon later at a higher price, naturally. And uh, <laughs> we are organizing the next meeting, it will be in January 28th to 31st, also in Lisbon, in the Pavilion of Knowledge. So you are all uh, welcome. We would like to eventually have a meeting this big and this nice in, in Portugal. We are, even though we are very proud of what we have been doing, it will be our fifth uh, meeting and the, the success is increasing. We have also, for the most interested in the combinatorial game theory uh, matters, this is more scientific, we have a meeting, it, it will be the second one, a combinatorial game theory colloquium, also in Lisbon, back to back, so some people will be in both, again in January, 25th to 27th, it will be in the University of Lisbon, so please, if you have any questions, see me or send an email to our general email address, ludus at ludicum.org is the email address of our association. As Stein uh, told you, we publish a recreational mathematics magazine, it's doing very well, and is now published by uh, De Greuter. It's uh, free access on the internet, the papers are beautiful, you just download them, so please submit, read, and uh, talk about it to your friends. It's a very nice journal. And finally, we just published a book in Portuguese about Mathematic. Uh, me, Tiago, and Pedro that, that came uh, this year here. They are in, in our Portuguese conspiracy table and a friend that could not make it. If you want the book in Portuguese, I also have a few copies for sale. We have the cards like Ricardo mentioned in his talk. We have the cards about symmetries of the pavements of Lisbon, which are very nice. They have a, a problem, a pattern, and the card that explains the symmetries and the classifications, including Conway's classifications. This is very good to high school teachers and so on. It has all the patterns and freezes. And I'm not going to tell you again because Ricardo already explained you that. I also have some historical cards by Descartes, 17th century, that are very nice. This is work by Descartes. So if you want to take a look at them, I can also show it to you. I actually. Uh, order the deck made with playing cards, official playing cards, so it's very nice. Okay, and now uh, the topic of my talk is the how does a dog fetch a bone in the water? Uh, you can see in this uh, little movie that dog starts by running along the, the shore and only then he uh, dives into the water let me see if I can do this. How does it display? Okay. It should play. I would like to, see, to show you again. Yes. Something is thrown. It first runs on the sand, and then it goes into the water. And the reason is clear. The dog runs much faster than he swims. And so he wants to get to the bone fast. This is a classical problem is known by the, the dog that knows calculus, I'll, I'll tell you why, is Elvis. Because this is a calculus problem, you just want to minimize the time to, to your target. And the situation is, is easy to, to draw here, you have some part of the path will be on soil, on the sand, and then you throw yourself into the water. So what is the optimal point to dive into the water? Uh, we have some experiments here to show that really it matters, this point. And you have the dog, <laughs> and you have the time. 
So when you vary the, the point that the dog chooses, of course, the time suffers. Here, he went into the water too soon, so he spent almost 22 seconds. And uh, with this little program, <laughs> you can change the parameters. And this is Elvis' owner throwing the bone. And here again, it was past the optimal point. The thing is that uh, there is an optimal point for each initial condition, of course. And uh, this dog seems to be smart enough to uh, get it almost right all the time. Elvis is the dog of Tim Pennings that wrote a paper on this. The dog made it to CNN, so he, he was in the news uh, <laughs> some 10 years ago. And uh, our contribution will be to show you a different method to solve this problem that is very elementary in the technical sense of the word and, and very classic. So the approach is based on choosing this unity of uh, length, the meter, and the unit of velocity, the time the dog takes to run one meter. Uh, so we have the velocity on shore and the, the velocity, the velocity of running and swimming, and the, we have the rate of them. R is larger than one, of course, because the dog runs faster than he swims. And the uh, Penning solved this problem in this uh, now uh, somehow famous uh, paper, Do Dogs Know Calculus? Uh, of course, he, made, he, he set the problem up in the calculus way. He has a function that gives you the time. He wants to minimize this. And so he takes derivatives and finds the zero of the derivative and so on. And uh, eventually, he gets to the optimal point. This is today an exercise that we give to to freshmen in, 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 in Lisbon University. So this is nice, but then it's funny that the dog gets it almost always very, very close to the optimal point. And uh, it's funny, so the, 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 the question is, do, does Elvis know calculus, really? Well, uh, the agreement is really very good. <laughs> there were other approaches, for instance, uh, this approach here, the, the authors, they measure the velocity of approaching the target. And uh, of course, Pythagoras theorem and uh, with the, the relation between velocities, there's the velocity on shore and the velocity of approaching on water. And when they equal each other, that's the optimal point. So we get, the, the authors get this equation and solve the equation and get, of course, the same answer is the same optimal point. There's no, no question about it. Well, there have been more works on this, and uh, what do really dogs know about it's complicated. <laughs> so this is a long story. And uh, our contribution is this one. So you can represent in the same line, in the same graph, you can represent uh, here d is the distance the dog is going to swim. So the time this takes to, to, to swim is r times d. So the dog starts at the origin, comes up to a point x0, it dives in. And so here is the unity, uh, of the, the unity we chose for the speed. And then we have to add the time it takes to make this, which is rd. So this point here, x plus rd, its first coordinate shows us the time the dog takes to get to the bone. And this is the quantity we want to minimize. And now we have here several triangles. I, I, well, we have a big triangle mainly, and we have a smaller triangle that we'll use next. We use the law of signs. It's the, the most sophisticated mathematics that we must use to solve this problem. And we get a relation between this angle alpha on top and this beta at the bottom. And with a little manipulation, you solve for sinus of b. And then you have the contagion of b given in terms of the velocities and alpha. And now, if you consider the, this inner triangle, of which beta is also an inner angle, you get that this measure from this perpendicular to x plus rd is given by this expression on the right. It's the cotation of beta 
that we found before, and so it's square, b square root of r squared over sine of square of alpha minus one. And this is obviously minimum when alpha is a right angle. This has nothing special about it. So, what? What? I hated you already, man. I hated you already, man. Okay. Okay, it's very, it's very, see? Thank you, man. Thank you. You, you get my dollar, you get my dollar. You get my dollar. <laughs> man, don't fuss with Portuguese conspiracy, please. Okay. I'm finishing, I'm finishing. Okay, so alpha must be a right angle. And this gives us a classical construction, very easy to solve the problem that is the following. We have a dog, we have a bone. We draw the perpendicular from the bone to the, to the shore. We prolong Rm, R is the, the, the ratio between the, the speeds. We do the circumference, we get a point here on the right, that is the point that I called x plus rd before. So we just mark that point, and with that point, connect it, I, I connect to the bone with a segment and draw a right angle. That's all there is to it. So it's a classical construction. If these quantities are constructible in the Euclidean sense, you just take a ruler and a compass and you find the optimal point. No calculus, no nothing. Thank you very much.